Hi, everyone. Welcome. I'm Lisa Natoli, and this is TGF TV Friday morning. And this is on every Friday morning at 1030 a.m. Eastern. I am the host every first Friday of the month on the topic of true healing. And I am thrilled to be here today with two very powerful teachers of God and dear friends of mine, Carly Hardy and Teresa McGallicker. Welcome. And what we do here is we're on Facebook Live for 30 minutes. And, and then what we do is we move over at 11 a.m. into our Evolve member community where our Evolve members are able to interact and ask questions of our guests, share their stories. So if you'd like to be an Evolve member and you're not already, there will be a link in the Facebook page. And what we always really want to do here on these weekly shows is just inspire individuals to a new way of seeing themselves and a new way of living. And this is focused on A Course in Miracles and being the self, being the true self, the eternal changeless nature. And I am thrilled to have known Teresa and Carly for years. I've known both of you. I knew Teresa first. I met Teresa back in, when was it? 2014, 13? 2015. Okay. And, and Teresa actually came to a retreat in Maine. I knew her online. And then she came to a Course in Miracles retreat that I, I um, was running in Maine. And then I met Carly. What year did I meet you, Carly? Um, I actually met you at the World Conference at um, the Teachers of God World Conference. But what we didn't meet each other. And then it would have been when we started B-School. That what year was that? 2000 and 2017. Oh, that was 2017. Mm -hmm. And Carly and Teresa have actually partnered up to create a miracles attraction community. They have a miracle tribe. It's called miraclestribe.com. And the topic today is stepping up as a teacher of God. So before I get going, I want to just give your official bios um, and just the topic for today. It took a big leap of faith for Carly and Teresa to put themselves out there as quote unquote teachers of God. Neither had business experience, but were determined to let others know that suffering is unnecessary and that A Course in Miracles can be fun, enjoyable, since many teachers tend to focus on theology. And I, that's so near and dear to my heart because that's really what I'm all about too, is, is really inspiring people to go through the direct experience and get out of your head. Like stop trying to talk about the course and actually start living it. So Teresa McGallicker underwent a spiritual shift in 2015 as a result of her practice of A Course in Miracles, which resulted in the end of worry, guilt, shame, doubt, and fear. And she wants everyone to know that mind training renders suffering unnecessary. I love that. And I've seen it. I've seen, I've seen what you, how you used to be, how you are now, what you went through. So I'm excited to have you share. And Carly Hardy is all about fun. And so is Teresa, but I love that you put that in your bio and has two master's degree in counseling and leadership from the University of Utah. She combines her academic training with the principles of A Course in Miracles to help resolve issues and find greater peace. She has written a memoir, Spirited, A Hundred Mile Run to Save a Life, which is amazing. And Carly has an incredible story also of coming out of a Mormon community and, and really embracing the principles of and embodying truth. So welcome. I'm going to start with you, Teresa. And I'd love for you just to share your story of what it's been to step up as a teacher of God. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you so much for having us. We're so thrilled to be here. And I wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for you and your programs. I was telling Carly that I ran across my journal yesterday from when I did the 40 days in 2015. And I was reading about how my life was just so filled with drama and conflict and, and upsets. And it's so hard to believe I used to live that way because it just it isn't like that anymore. So um, I had several 
years after 2015 of just really enjoying being in this new peaceful state and um, just practicing the principles of A Course in Miracles on my, my own in my own personal life. But then after Carly and I met, I felt a strong need to get this message out to a greater audience. And so that's why we decided to team up and create a community where people can come and be encouraged to do the workbook lessons and to see that life doesn't have to be this difficult struggle, that there's another way that you can live. And Carly and I want to set an example that life can be fun and relaxing and enjoyable. So it's been a process. It's been, you know, six years, I guess now of, and I'm still finding little hidden corners that need forgiveness every week, but it's become more and more subtle and easier. And um, I'm just really excited that I'm able to help other people to get to this place now. Wow. I, I love that. And, and what you two are doing, I love your Facebook group. I, I you have really have made it experiential. And, and what you just said, Teresa, is, is why I teach. And some people know my story as I was alone in New York City back in the 90s. And I kept trying to reach angels and hear God's voice. And I was doing it alone. I kept trying to read the course and have some kind of experience. But the course teaches we learn it through each other. That's how the separation ends. And I reached out in my mind and said, I need a physical person. You send me a physical person who can really teach me this or show me what I want to know. And my friend Greta showed up that week and just being herself. And because of her, because that was an answer to my prayer and a human body showed up that I was like, oh, that's how it works. That we we listen to the truth and we, we follow our guidance and we say, okay, I'm going to show up as a light in this world. And I'm going to be the demonstration that suffering's not necessary. And then others are like, okay, it must be possible. And you two just make it available. You really, the, the two of you together and individually have made it so that it's down to earth, practical. You can really see like, Okay, this can be done. And one of the things I love, Teresa, um, that you're doing is the same thing that I did is the prosperity work. And Course in Miracle community mostly is like, we're not going to go there. Money is worldly. But that's part of it to heal every block in our mind. And money's a big one. It's, a, it's a, the idea of scarcity. And so I love the prosperity work that you do and that you introduce in this community of these little challenges for, for activating people to try something new and see in a new way. So before I move on to Carly, do you want to say anything more about that? Um, well, that was, I found that the prosperity or lack um, scarcity thinking was the last and biggest stumbling block that I had to get over. So I started off with healing relationships. That was a big source of conflict for me. And I got to a point where all my relationships were healed. And then I saw that the money thing was huge for me. So that's what I've been working on the last year or two. And the transformation in that area has just been remarkable. I've gotten completely out of debt and I'm really excited about what I've learned to share with our community. Yeah, I love that. So I'm gonna move on to you, Carly. And Carly, um, yeah, I met you through B-School. I met you first at A Course in Miracles, but then we, we met in my Marie Folio B-School group. And again, what I love about the two of you and I love about my own practice was that for me for years, this whole spiritual path was very ethereal. I kept trying to leave the body. I kept trying to have an out, out there experience. And I kept getting clear guidance come back into the body. Like you're not a body, but come into the body. And, and I started to go, okay, how can I get this message out? What about building a business? And I was full of shame about it. Cause I thought, oh my God, this is so worldly. And I got attacked for it. Also, I got like, people were saying you're compromising and mixing levels. And, but I met you in B school and it's just been incredible to see your own transformation and how, I mean, you left a whole life. You left an entire world because you were listening to that guidance of like time to move forward. So I'd love to hear you share 
um, what it is for you to step up as a teacher of God. Oh, thank you so much, Lisa. And thank you so much for the programs that you've had. I agree with Teresa that I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for your programs. And you just need to know that Lisa doesn't just let you sit on the fence. Like when you decide to work with Lisa, you jump in at 100%. I mean, there are commitment letters and there are daily practices. And it's not just 10 minutes, but it's 30 minutes time with God. And it really stretches you in new ways. And just yesterday, it was like, you know, it doesn't just show up this time. You make this time for God and you begin living in a different way. So thank you, Lisa, for not just being the theoretical, but for really giving us things to do. And those are the kinds of things that Teresa and I love to bring into our business and to our tribe. And yes, yeah. this month is all about prosperity in our tribe. And we both felt, once again, you don't want to be alone. When you start studying The Course in Miracles, you begin living in a different way and seeing life in a different way. So how great to have a tribe that you can relate to and, I mean, be there for you, be a part of, be a support of. And thank you so much, Teresa. I mean, it's just been such a wonderful partnership for me. But when I came to B-School, and Lisa always says, you know, just press the button. I mean, it was so scary for me when I got the email. And she was going to have this group. Uh, we were going to study with Marie Forleo. So she was an affiliate and has yeah. of Marie's. Marie has B-School. But for me, it was going to be. And it was expensive. It was expensive, <laughs> and I had never done anything like it, but I thought if there's a combination of spiritual, if I have Holy Spirit and, and God on my side and business, there's hope. There's mm -hmm. hope that things can happen. But what happened for me is after the B-School finished, there was a group of about eight of us that stayed together for an entire year and met once a week. And every time I got on that call, I watched these women sit peacefully. I mean, they were able just to sit in stillness. And I was in awe. I just went, I was the only one who was fidgeting, <laughs> fixing my hair. <laughs> just, and they were all had such a peace. And that, I know I get emotional, but that was what <laughs> called to me. I just was like, because at the time I was spinning, you know, just, Oh, in so many different directions. So it was the peace that everyone exuded and just that ability to sit still. Mm -hmm. And once again, just yesterday to go, okay, 30 minutes, time with God, that ability to sit still, to have a calm enough mind that isn't just freaking you out, mm -hmm. to be able, yeah, it's a precious, precious gift. And no one had really spoken to me of peace. I love that. There's so many things you just said, Carly, that I love, but this whole idea of like that we're the ones who have to do it. It's all available to us. But we, often I think, in, and when we're on a spiritual path where we want happiness and we want joy and we want peace and we want a new life and we want to see differently. And we, we, we think, oh, it's just going to happen. I'm just going to wake up in the morning and I'm going to be totally different. And it's, it's not like that. I mean, maybe for some people it's like that, but I, I haven't met them. It really is like, it's available. It's, it's like a, it's a state of mind that we have to move into and it's not a physical moving, but it has to be like, yes, yes, I'm willing to see differently. I'm willing to release my grievances, even though I don't know how to, I'm willing to do something different. And I love what you said, like I activate people to, for action to get off the fence because there's no other way. You got to get in the game. You got, if you want to, if you want to see a difference, you can, you got to really say, okay, this is it. It's, it's like reading a, you know, fitness magazines and hoping that you'll transform your body. It's like, you got to move, you got to get in the gym or get outside or put on your sneakers or do something differently. And I think that's one of the big parts 
that is a stumbling block for so many on the spiritual path is they're waiting and wishing and wondering and hoping for their life to change. They're just like, I want it so bad. I want it. And then they get angry because they want it so bad. And it's like, it's here. It's like, it's here. But it, and it, the other thing I want to say about this too is I actually, Teresa, I've told this story before, but it's, it's just, I love it so much. But when you told me back on the beach, so when Teresa came to the retreat back in Maine, and we had this moment, just the two of us, we, we were sitting out on the beach together in our bathing suits and our little chairs. And she's so honest. And that's something I always teach authenticity and don't try to be happy and pretend. And she, she says, Do you know, Lisa, I really did not like you. And I really did not like these programs at first because it was the resistance that you were going through. You were, but you had the willingness to stand in the work and to allow that to just be. I'd love if you can just talk a little bit about that resistance, that anger, that whatever that was, because so many people go through it. Yeah, it wasn't that I didn't like you. I thought you were a celebrity. I was very intimidated about meeting you, actually, because after I'd seen you on video show up in my house every day, you seemed kind of like a star. But I was frustrated with the Living in Purpose program because I had spent quite a bit of money for it, which I had the scarcity thinking, so I didn't feel like I could afford it at the time. And then I didn't feel like I was getting big results. And I had such amazing miracles happen during the 40 day program, which was free. Oh, that's what it was, right. I expected living in purpose to be like 40 days on steroids. And I expected to have, you know, exponential miracles. And that wasn't happening. I felt like nothing was happening. And so I was frustrated. But what I came to realize over that six month period was that things were happening at a very, um, a very quiet and subconscious level. And I couldn't see what was happening until it was all done. So there was this like very subtle unraveling of all these stories and grievances that I had held on to for 50 years. And one day I just realized after the six months had gone by that I didn't have all these upsets anymore. Right. I didn't have doubts about myself and about the world anymore. Like these things that used to hold me back had just somehow mysteriously disappeared. Mm -hmm. um, but I was, I was sitting quietly every morning doing my journaling, doing my meditating, and I kept waiting for some fireworks to go off. And that wasn't happening. So it was my ex expectations about how it should look that were the problem for me. I love that. And I'm, I'm so happy I brought the story up and, and remember now I remember what it was, but it was exactly that. I mean, you were saying the 40 day was like Christmas morning, every morning, I wonder what the video is going to be like, it's going to be Oh, my God. And then to come into this deeper practice, that it, often the deeper practice seemed boring to people. It's like we're waiting for the fireworks, we're waiting for something. And, and the thing that I've seen, and that's why I do really believe it's important for people just to make a commitment to this being your lifelong practice. Like not six months, not a year, but saying, okay, I'm going to, I'm, I'm in this till the end, whatever the end means to, uh, to allow this transformation to, to, to how, of course, the miracle says for the, the old roots of the old thought system to come up. And it's, it does seem boring. It seems like, oh, I've read transformation stories. I thought it was going to be something else. And then I love Teresa, what you said, what you said is one day, you know, you kind of, it's not like a, it's not like a firework, but one day you realize, oh, I've slowly been changing. It's so gradual that we often don't even know. And often, and I know people listening will, will know about this. Often our friends and family start commenting. They start saying, you're, you're different. You're what, what are you doing? So I want to thank you. And I want to, um, uh, come back to you, Carly. And I want you to just say a little bit more about what, what it's been for you to really step out of that old life into this new life. Oh, thank you, Lisa. Yeah, I, it's interesting because this new life hasn't left me options. It's sort of like I, I came to B school because I was in a position of really needing and wanting to start a business. 
And then I asked to reset. So I was in this group and all of a sudden it was like, wow, this group of women is the creme de la creme. These are all really neat people. So I started reaching out and asking them for help. And one day Teresa said, I had a prayer partner and she needed a new place to live and has an amazing miracle. And I called her right after, took her phone number and said, I need a housing miracle. <laughs> and we started reading the lessons together. And once again, I'm here to say, I could never have done what I did alone. It took, you know, Teresa's generosity, her patience with me. And she had to begin by saying, Carly, I need you not to multitask. Um, and you need to know that as Mormons, um, and we're in Utah, we're the beehive state. So we're all busy as bees. I mean, we love to be busy. We love to be doing things. And for me to give all of that up, and really be centered and really be with her as we read and then to write on three by five cards and put them in my pockets and begin training my mind yeah and i love the part we still do from the 40 days watching your mind like a hawk so it's been so beautiful in fact i do i get emotional and I cry mm -hmm. because um just yep. yesterday we were able to, i mean here we are with lisa and yesterday we interviewed Corinne Zupko. Mm, I love her. I mean, you truly begin to feel what love feels like. Yeah. I mean, in my others, um, in Mormonism, and there are people who do that very differently. So it was just my experience that I own that I invited in a punitive God. There are many, many rules. And I just thought, you know, I'm not enough and I can't get it right. I'm not mm -hmm. enough and I can't get it right. And it's been the study of the Course in Miracles. Yeah. And yeah. One of the reasons why I wanted to have you two on, and I'm so grateful for the way you're sharing, is I began to recognize, because I'm behind the scenes a lot with people like you that are just quietly doing the work, that are not famous, not celebrities, but like so totally like 100% dedicated I mean, rock star. That's how I feel. Like I, I get on these calls that are private and I'm like, oh my God, how did I land with all of these people that no one knows about? And so to hear that the group stayed on for a year and I wasn't needed, that brings me so much joy. And to, to really realize that there are people around the world who are doing this. And no one needs to suffer. There's so many people in the world right now who just think I'm all alone. I don't have community. I don't have, and that's what the Evolve community is also. It's just like, so many people are hearing this one message of like, it's time to be present and go from the mountaintop experience where we're just studying into, okay, we're here to bring light to the world. We're here to step up as teachers of God. And we're here to demonstrate that there's no need to suffering. There's always another way. So I want to just say, because we are moving into the 11 o'clock time, um, just how people can find you. It's miraclestribe.com. And it's on Facebook. It's called the a Miracles Attraction Community. And so... Um, that's just the way they can find you. And, and before we log off, if, if those of you who are on Facebook want to come over, we're going to stay on for another half an hour. And you can ask Teresa or Carly questions. You can share your own story. We'll be on from 11 to 1130 and evolve. We, we want you to come over. We're actually having a try it out for seven days for $1. So it's you just come in, just come in and test it out and see what you think. And, not for you, just unsubscribe. And and next week is Kelly Russell with John Mundy. And so uh, those two are rock stars. And so I want to just um, give you both just another moment. We have about five more minutes before we go off into the uh, Evolve membership area. Teresa, would you like to share any final words for people listening? I just want to say that it doesn't matter what you're going through or how difficult it might seem or how impossible to solve that miracles are possible anytime, anywhere for anyone. That is the truth. 
and and that's it like because so many people think well i don't have money i don't have um ability you don't know my story and so to hear you say that really is uh, i hope for some a hope that it's it's like okay and we start right here that's always our our place where we say okay i can forget the past so thank you for that and carly what would you say to people well, I want um, people to know that stepping up once again is scary. I mean, you don't know what it's going to happen. You've never done it before. But after I did the workbook lessons with Teresa, I was amazed. I mean, my ego, I didn't even realize it was running the show. I had no idea. And I had tried every program in the book, spent thousands of dollars. And then it was the simple reading of the lessons, which is what we support our group in doing. So it's still scary. Um, you know, it's, but it's still scary. It's the lessons and reading those that bring you to a whole new place, a whole new place. I'm unrecognizable yeah. to myself. And then also I love what Lisa says, the truth of you, the truth of you is love. So it's, it's come, it's a place you've never left. It's not far out there. It's it's within you. It's yeah. really truly a place you've never left. Yeah. And yeah, I'd love I love Carly that you you brought this up. I actually want to carry this conversation into the evolve area. This whole idea of like it's scary because I think that this is that this is another stumbling block for people is they think well I'll step up when I'm not in fear. No, you the whole thing of stepping up is th to dissolve the fear. You have to do the thing you, you're scared to do when you don't want to do it, if life is pushing you to do it, because because then what happens, every single thing I've done in life, I've been terrified to do every single thing. And it's like, but if life is, is kind of wants to express through, I have to say, okay, it's time. And then the mind will go on. And I, I know you two very well. And I've, I've had conversations. I'm not ready. Who am I? I I'm, you know, I, like, I love Teresa that you said you still have things that come up. And it's like, that's when we teach. That's when we, that's when we step up, we step up and we say, okay, maybe I think I'm not ready, but I'm going to push the button and I'm going to do this thing that wants to come through me, whatever it is. And, and, and then we're like surprised by, um, you know, just what life brings us. So I want to thank you both for being here. We're only leaving Facebook and we're going to head on over into the Evolve community where I can see the chat board already is, uh, is ready to roll. And thank you, Facebook. We're here every Friday morning. I love you. Thank you so much.